Okay, so we're going to just basically cover almost like you know entire part, like let's be starting from radians, like basic stuff, like radians. Then I'm going to move after that to a basic unit circle. Um, after that, we're going to do the compound angle formulas, compound angle formulas, and of course, we're going to take a lot of problem solving. Now, just a quick recap, I mean, this is just like, you know, building up on the skills. The first thing is, let us say when you're talking about uh, the formulas which are relevant. Now, the three formulas that we remember is, uh, I mean, are basically the sine cosine rule formulas, sine cosine rule formulas, which are obviously, you know, that if we got a triangle, okay, so if you got a triangle here as A, B, and C, now, opposite to A is A, opposite to B is B, and opposite to C is small c. Okay, in that case, your sine of angle A over small a equals to sine of angle B over small b equals to sine of angle C over um, small c. So that's your sine rule, obviously we know that. Now the cosine rule we have got is a square is b square plus c square minus 2bc cos of angle a. So this is one of the very important one, like your cosine rule. And um, the area formula that we look at, area of the triangle, if you have been given two sides and two red angle, then area of the triangle is given by half a or uh, b sine c or you can say half A C sine B, or you can say half B C sine angle A. So basically product of the two sides and times sine of the included angle. So that's about the uh, basically like you know, three basic relevant formulas. And um, just to recap, you know, the basic trigonometry, uh, first, we must remember this 30, 60, 90 triangle because a lot of times in non calculator you get the questions like, suppose if I've got this angle is 30 degrees, um, this is basically 60 degrees. Opposite to 30, we take generally one. Opposite to 60 is root three and hypotenuse is two. And so you can use this triangle to predict the ratio, sine, cosine ratios of uh, 30 and 60. Uh, next up is 45, 45, 90. So 45, 45, 90, which you got here as one, here as one. And this is basically root two. And uh, what is really important is understanding the, the conversion, which is like from degrees to radians. So if you want to convert a formula from degrees to radians, degrees to let's say radians, If you're being given an angle, multiply by pi by 180 to get from degrees to radian and multiply 180 by pi to convert from radians to degrees. So that is about the interconversion of some relevant formulas that we have also learned are the sector formulas. So if you got the angle in degrees, let's say if an angle is in degrees, the length of the arc formula we all know is theta over 360 times 2 pi r and then area is theta upon 360 times pi r square. So these are the two formulas in, in, in degree mode. And uh, in, in radians, we have got, if your angle is in radians, uh, so if you've got this angle in radian, so in that case, length of the arc is r times theta and, and the area is half times r square theta. So if you convert from degrees to radian, you, you, you can use the formulas um, for the radians as well, which is L is r theta, area is half r square theta. So this is like very basic uh, preliminary stuff that you require. Let me take an example that can help us understand uh, the fundamentals that we have. So, uh, first thing is, let us take an example of a sector. Let us say this, this sector is having a particular angle theta. And let's say this length is 
10 meters. And these two ends of the sector are joined to form a cone. So it'll form like a cone here. Form like a cone. So if you join this two, uh, it forms like a cone, you know. So this um, cone has got a radius of, let's say, five. This cone has got a radius of five centimeters. What you have to find out is what was the angle theta that you picked. So, how do you find out angle theta from the given condition? Now, if you simply visualize, it's very, very common that you know, clearly you can see here that if I look at this length, actually is being converted, which is the radius of the sector, is being converted as a slant length of the, uh, like, you know, uh, cone. Because if you cut open the cone, you will see that this opens and it gives you this particular shape that. So this length is already checked. And now also you notice that this particular length, which is the length of the arc, length of the arc is also becoming the circumference of the base. So length of the arc is being converted into circumference of the base. So let us say if this length is being converted as circumference of the base, we can easily find out the circumference of the base out here. The circumference of the base is um, basically we have been given uh, circumference of the base is going to become 2 pi times radius. So 2 pi times 5, which is 10 pi. So length of the arc is 10 pi here. So this is 10 pi. Now, uh, this length, obviously, we know you can find out by multiplying r times theta. So if I take r times theta is basically uh, 10 pi. Because this circumference of the base and these two are equal. So that is very important. So we, we if we take this radius now as 10, so 10 times theta is 10 pi. And this 10 and 10 get cancelled. We get theta as pi radius. So basically, this is like a semicircle, so semicircle, which you are bending and forming like this. So this is what we get here. Like this is one of the examples. Um, and, and like, you know, uh, you should know which length is being converted to which uh, just the summary is like the slant length is the base same as the radius per sector and the length arc length is the circumference of the uh, circumference of the base. So this is mainly about the uh, like, you know, area of the sector and the bone conversion. Okay, so the next part which we have got is basically um, which you have got is uh, what we have is uh, the example of like you know two coinciding uh, circles basically. So if I have got a circle which is basically let's say here, the second circle is let's say with certain different center, and what we have been given is that these two circles have got certain radius. So let's say we have been given that the radius of the the tiny one radius of the tiny circle. This circle is basically, um, let's say, pi, and with this radius, uh, the second circle is, let's say, um, 7, or let's say I take 8. So this radius is 8 centimeters, this is 5 centimeters, and what you have to do is, you have to basically find out, you have to find out the area that is like, you know, overlapping both the circles. Like let it be SL or HL, like this is one of the very interesting examples. How do I find out the area of the shaded part? It has been given that you have been um, you have been given this particular length, which is let's say uh, nine centimeters. This length, sometimes they'll give you this length, sometimes they'll give you this length. So based on what they have given, you will be applying like you know, maybe uh, the formula for either like um, Sine or cosine, which is which is going to be important. So, or like Sopato, I will apply or cosine will apply. So that is something which is very very important. So, so let us just take a, a first part, which is here, which is like you know, uh, in this case, it is. Um, let's say, how do I start with this problem? So, understanding here is let's say if you got a sector. So, if I create a segment out here. If I create a segment, let's say this is the part that we got. This is the part that is I'm trying to find the area for. If I know this angle by any chance, if I have this radius, 
then I can just find the area of this entire sector minus area of triangle. So that's the same logic I'm going to use out here as well. So area of sector minus area of triangle is something that we are going to look for. So here what we have is area of the sector is half r square theta minus half r square sine theta. Half r square theta minus half r square sine theta. So that is going to be the area of the sector. Now, in this particular problem, if you see, I can just divide this into two parts. Okay, so first I'm going to calculate this part area by considering this side segment. So, in this side segment, when I consider it, it's like here. Um, so, this is what we got. This is something like here. This segment length we got eight. This is eight. Uh, we need to get this angle. That's it. So, what I do is here I apply cosine. Because I know 8, 5, and 9. So if I take this as x, my cos x is going to be um, 8 square plus 9 square minus 5 square upon 2 times 8 times 9. So uh, when you find out this particular angle, try to find it in radians. So when you calculate the exact value for x, uh, that comes out to be 0.58. So first we find out the area of this part, which is here. So that is area of the uh, sector minus area of triangle. So you do half h square theta, half r square theta. Area is half r square theta. And then second part is half a b sine c. So half times a times sine of this entire angle, which comes to be 7.78. Similarly, find out the angle y. Um, uh, so here you, you're going to double the angle y first. Like I, we need to make sure that first we find y in cosine and make sure you double it. So the angle is 1.08 times 2, which is 2.16. So half r squared times 2.16 minus half times pi squared times sine of 2.16. One six. So you will get this particular. Uh, so you're going, to, you're going to get certain answer to this. This answer comes out to be sixteen point six six or uh, sixteen point six zero. And if you add with this, we get twenty four point three eight. Guys, now let's do the uh, past exam question. All right. So <clears throat> once again, here we have to firstly, like you know, understand there are certain critical important, like you know, identities that we have. The first identity being the Pythagoras identity that is sine square theta plus cos square theta is one. So in standard level only we have got this part. For the higher level, we have got um, the identities such as like if I do one plus tan square theta, it is um, nothing but six square theta. And if we got one plus uh, cot square theta, it is cosec square theta. And sec theta obviously we know that it is one over one cos reciprocal of cos and um, cosec is reciprocal of uh, sine. So cosec theta is one upon sine theta. So this is, these are the three identities that we have. Um, now, very interesting thing is, if you look at the unit circle, uh, the basic rule, ASTC rule, uh, if any angle, like uh, I just saw it recollected uh, for you, is if you go uh, anti-clockwise, the angle is taken as positive. If you go clockwise, angle is taken as negative. So any angle in the first quadrant, obviously, it will have the uh, the sine ratio, cos cosine ratio, and all the ratios are positive here. In the second quadrant, only sine ratio is positive. In the third quadrant, tan is positive. In the fourth quadrant, cos is positive. So obviously, this becomes one of the tool for us to find out one of the missing stuff. Like for example. If they have given us that okay, sine x has been given as three by four, and x has been given that okay, x is in the quadrant number two, which is ninety to uh, one hundred and eighty, you have to find out the value of let's say tan x. So obviously, you can um, apply any of the identity straight away, or you can basically do the simple triangle method, which I really like the triangle method, which is if I take this as x, opposite is three, hypotenuse is four. This is going to become root of 16 minus 9, which is nothing but a root of 7. So from here, I can get tan x as 3 upon root 7. Now, since the angle is in second quadrant, 
In the second quadrant, tan is negative. So that's why I'm going to take tan as negative. Be mindful of that. Now, just to recap a particular set of questions, I, I just want to refresh through this particular problem. If you have to find, if you have to solve this, and I'm going to ask this, okay, sign, find the value sine pi minus x or cos, let's say, pi by 2 plus x, then you have got tan of 2 pi minus x or let's say sine of minus x or cos of pi plus or x. And, and so how do we do this without like, you know, calculating or without like finding the actual value? So now look, if you see the important like you know instruction that I've given during our regular time is that whenever you add an angle uh, or subtract an angle from or to pi, so pi plus x or pi minus x, or any multiple of pi, like pi, two pi, three pi. Now, for example, if there's two pi also, so in general, k pi if you have. Okay, the base angle. Now, what do we what do we mean by base angle is basically suppose if I got this angle and I add 180 to this. So if I add 180 to this, we we'll go back in here and this angle we still theta. So angle with the x-axis is referred as base angle. So that base angle, whenever you add or subtract an angle, um, let's say to or from k pi multiples or like your multiple of pi, which are like integer multiples, then your base angle doesn't change. And if base angle is not changing, logically, the ratio value will not change. Now, uh, for example, if I'm finding, let's say, an angle here, or let's say, if I have a triangle here, if the heights are the same, bases are the same, obviously, the ratio value will be the, also the same. Right? Because numerical value is not just like the side length ratios, but due to the angle variation, what happens is it becomes like your uh, difference in the sign. So, all of these multiples, whenever you are adding or subtracting all multiples of like, you know, uh, 180, uh, I mean the multiples of 180 or subtracting from that, which is like, you know, k pi basically. Uh, so in that, these cases, your base angle is always, like, always intact. So what you have to say is, if there is a sine ratio you found, let's say I'm finding it sine of pi minus x, it will, it will be just sine of pi minus x itself. So sine of pi minus x will be, uh, uh, it is going to be same as sine x itself. But now which quadrant the angle has moved, it is something that we need to decide. So if the angle is now, if I say angle, let's say I pick up a numerical value in my mind, let's say x I pick up as uh, 100 and let's say 130, for example, this is not, you are not supposed to write it. So 180 minus 30 uh, moves to 180 minus 130 moves back to the first quadrant. So any angle which has got a ratio, in the first quadrant, you'll be always positive. So that's why this answer is same as 3, 4. And also remember as a rule that sine pi minus x is same as sine x. This is very helpful to solve certain kind of questions sometimes. So that's one thing. And also all of these, like whenever you look at this one, now tan 2 pi minus x will be blindly considered to be same as tan x. Now which quadrant does this move to back? So let's say if you take an angle of, of x as 120 subtract from 360 it goes back to tan 240 which is important on the 3 so in that case a tan x tan 2 pi minus x will be same as tan x which is nothing but uh, let's say this is tan x so the answer which you will have already will be nothing but um negative uh, i mean it will become positive because angle is in third quarter now so 3 by root of so this is this is an important stuff. It's very important to understand. So when you look at the questions like sine of minus x, now suppose if you have an angle here, suppose if my angle is second quadrant, minus x means the angle moves to third quadrant. So in this case, obviously sine of minus x actually it is just remember this is a property. It is sine is an odd function. So sine of minus x is same as negative sine x, and this is going to be same as negative of three four. Cos pi plus x. Now cos pi plus x is like you're adding 180 to an angle. Pi is equal to 180. So cos pi plus x now will be basically moving to um let's say an angle is in first second quadrant. If I add 180 to that, it will move back to the fourth quadrant. So in cos in the second quadrant, so blindly you say that okay, this is like cosine ratio, it's gonna be same as cos of the base angle, but since it is in quadrant number four, it is gonna be positive of cosine. 
So positive of cos. So now if I if I do the cosine, cosine is nothing but here root seven by four. So that's going to be the uh, answer for the uh, cos of pi plus x. Now the interesting part is what happens is when you add odd multiples of nineteen. Like for example, if I add like cos of ninety plus x or cos of ninety minus x. Or cos of two seventy plus x. So whenever you add up odd multiples of ninety, now in that case your base angle actually changes. So in that case, for example, if I look at here, if my angle is x here, as let's say is thirty degrees, one eighty minus thirty, basic uh, sorry ninety minus thirty will become sixty. So now your base angle actually has become different. So in such cases, wherever your base angle is being different here. In this case, remember that these are the interesting observations. So whenever you are doing adding or subtracting angle of from two odd multiple of ninety, so pi by two plus or minus let's say theta, it will change to plus or minus uh, sine theta. So depending upon which quadrant it moves, so cos pi by two plus theta becomes like you know sine theta or minus sine theta depending upon the quadrant. Okay. So now let us just take a, this particular example. So cos pi cos ninety plus x. Now blindly it becomes cos ninety plus x will become sine x. Now cos changes to sine, sine changes to cos, sec changes to cosec. Whenever you have this part, so cos ninety plus x changes to sine x. But now depending upon what what which coordinate the angle is. So now since this is in Already in second quadrant, if I if I add to add a ninety to that angle, particular angle, it will move to third quadrant. Now, cos of an angle in third quadrant is negative, so that's why this answer will also be negative, which is negative sine x, and hence it will be negative three by four. Now, similarly, if I have cos ninety minus x, now cos ninety minus x is going to be basically cos x or uh, sine x. So let's say sine x. Now, if you look at whether it is in which quadrant it goes. Now, if your angle is in second quadrant, if you subtract uh, 90 from there, so let's say 90 minus 120, 90 minus 120 is negative 30, which moves to the quadrant number three. So, whenever you do that, in that case, obviously, cos is positive, so it is going to be positive three four. So, this is very very interesting application, very important application, rather I would say. So, you must remember these kind of questions. So now what we have is basically, uh, like you know, how do we use unit circle and certain identities to solve like you know equations? A lot of times we get like you know, let's say sine x is uh, suppose if we have to solve sine x is one half, where x is between zero to three sixty. Uh, sometimes you get like sine three x equals to uh, root three by two, and x is between zero to one eighty. Sometimes you get something like this very very common question. Let's say if you got sine um, x equals to sine three x, sine x equals to sine three x. So now these are the question like this kind of question. Or let's say for that matter, if you got cos x equals to cos of let's say five um, x. So these are actually the two questions that you know sometimes bother a lot of students. Like first one is pretty easy, the recent one. Um, this is more of the HL than SL. So uh, for SL, we focus on only on these ones. So let's say when you're solving for sine x as half, where is actually sine positive? Now, if you see where is the angle positive, uh, your ratio is positive and sine is positive in quadrant number, uh, quadrant number one and quadrant number two. Now, next term is like what is the base angle? For what angle is my sine basically half? So base angle when you say half it is for thirty degrees and thirty degrees here. So base angle is sine inverse of half when you do sine inverse of half is thirty degrees. So now you look at the angle x. So x is either thirty degrees or second angle is one hundred and fifty. You don't take the angle this as some like you know other way round. So and second angle that you got is actually one hundred and fifty. So these are the two solutions for this particular range. Now the next one is pretty interesting, uh, which is like you know sine three x is uh, root three by two, and you have to solve for 
or x. I would like to make it more interesting by just adding a negative retail. So let's say if I have solved for the angles which are between negative 180 to positive 180. So how do we solve this particular question? So look, whenever you're solving for such questions, let, let's say if you got 3x is root 3 by 2. So the first thing we are solving is we're solving for 3x. You're not solving for x, you're solving for 3x. So you will, you're going to do the range of this by 3x. So first you find the range. The range of this is going to become 3x, which is minus 540 to 540. So once you got the range of this 3x value, so 3x is now you locate the quadrant. So when I locate the quadrant, sign is once again positive in the first and second. So base angle now here is 60 degrees because sine inverse of root 3 by 2 is uh, 60 degrees. So when you solve for the first angle, basically it is going to become um, 60 degrees. Second is going to become 120 degrees. Now look, we are not done yet. So when you take a rotation, now we got to go until 540. So 360 is done. Now do 360 plus 60. Next angle will be 360 plus 60, which is going to be 420. Next will be 360 plus 120. Uh, 360 plus 120 is basically 480. So these are the three answers, and you have to divide each of the answers by three. And similarly, now you go clockwise. Now, when I go clockwise, I first get the angle as negative 240. Then I get the second angle as negative 300. Next, I go is until here we are done with negative 360. So negative 360 minus 240. So negative 360 minus 240 is negative, let's say, um, negative 600. Then you have got uh, this one, which is going to be, let's say, 720 minus 60, which is um, uh, 7, uh, 720 minus 60 is like 6, uh, 6, uh, 40. I mean, 6, uh, 60. Um, so 660, uh, and you take negative of that. So this is going to be. Uh, negative of 600 and which is negative 660 and you're going to divide each of the answer by 3 then. So this answer if I divide by 3 I get the exact answers. You will notice that all of those answers will basically fit between negative 180 to 180. So by doing this like you know uh, straightforward method uh, you should answer uh, all the like you know solutions. It should not be that only I take only zero to one eighty or zero to minus one eighty. It's like a very casual approach. A lot of students do, and then they mess up the things. So whenever you're solving a question which is of the format sine x equals to sine of some other angle, okay. So in short, if it is equals to sine of if the equation format is sine x equals to sine y. Remember that the general solution of this equation is given by n pi, x equals to n pi, minus 1 to the power n y. So you don't need to write on the proof or anything for this. This is general solution for sine. So let us just first try to uh, do this particular question. So here what we have been given is x equals to uh, 3x. So for me, x equals to n pi. So n pi and plus minus 1 to the power n times 3x. So now for me, when I take the first angle, if I take start with let's say n at 0, I get my first angle as x equals to um, 0 plus 3x. And if I bring it one side, you get 2x equals to 0. So you get x as 0, which is obviously one of the solutions because if I plug x as 0 both the side, you can see sine 0 is equals to of zero definitely. Now we try with n equals to one. So try with n equals to one. So when I try with n equals to one, so I get x equals to pi minus three x because minus one to the power one is going to be negative. So second answer that you'll get is four x is pi. So x is nothing but pi by four. Similarly, go on to do the next one. So if I take n as two now. So it'll be x equals to 2 pi plus 3x, which is obviously like if I do or try to get the answer, which I'll get here. So I get negative 2x is 2 pi, and I get x as negative pi, which is not in our range. So that is absolutely ruled out. 
Now you try with n equals to 3. So when I try with n equals to 3, we get x equals to uh, 3 pi minus 3x. So we basically become 4x is equals to 3 pi by 4, x equals to 3 pi by 4. Then. Similarly, you can keep trying and get the exact answer whichever fits within the specified domain. Similarly, you can try doing any solution of the format cos x equals to cos y. And, um, you know, so that is also like the general solution for it is 2n pi plus or minus 1. Similarly, if you got tan x is tan y, then x is n pi plus 1. Uh, these questions, I mean, these techniques generally teachers will not cover extensively, but it's equally very important because, you know, these are sometimes like, you know, uh, basically considered as challenging techniques. So please make sure that you remember these. Uh, I'll just do one more question. When we're using, let's say, cos x equals to, I want to solve cos 2x. So cos x is equals to cos 2x. So first I'm going to solve with this approach, where x is 2n pi, x is 2n pi plus or minus y, which is y here is 2x. So you start with n as zero, you get the first answer. So you get n as nothing but uh, zero itself because that's what is one solution. Now start with n as one. So if I take x as n as one, so I get two pi plus uh, basically two x. Um, so you get x as negative pi. If I take plus y, then plus, if I take which is not in the correct range if I take x from 0, 360. So that is in uh, not in correct range. So now next one you take is x, I take, let's say minus, so 2 pi minus pi. It's uh, 2 pi minus 2x. If I take minus now, because it's plus or minus. So you get 3x is 2 pi. So x is 2 pi over 3. That's your one solution, which is in, in this range, 0 to 2 pi. Now you take n as basically 2, so x is 2 or times 2 times pi plus or minus 2x. Uh, so this is going to become x as 4 pi plus or minus 2x. So you get, obviously, once again, if you take positive, it's going to give you a negative answer. So you take negative itself, so x will be 4 pi minus basically 2x. So 3x is 4 pi, and you get x as Four pi by two. So it's more of the like you know getting more structured way to answer the questions uh, that like you know can go a little like you know category of being tricky. Okay, so what we've got next is uh, obviously we all know that's like double angle formula is not. So firstly, I will just touch base upon the uh, SL part of the double angle where the proofs are not expected. So. As we know that sine of two times uh, x or sine of x, the differentiation between the way we read this is sine 2x. We read as sine 2x. And this we read obviously as sine x. So whenever you have two times the angle like, of a given particular angle, we call it as a double angle. So let us say that if you got a sine 2x, or cos 2x, this is referred as a double angle formula, obviously. So just a quick recap, uh, the two formulas that we got, uh, double angle in terms of single angle is, sine 2x can be written as 2 sine x cos x. Uh, then you got sine 2x is written as 2 sine x cos x. Suppose if we got cos 2x double angle, so cos 2x, there are three double angle formulas. One is cos square x minus sine square x. Second one is, um, if you got cos 2x, I can write down this as instead of, if I write, instead of one minus cos square, or instead of cos square x, if I write on one minus sine square x, I get second double angle, which is one minus two sine square x. If you got cos of, let's say, um, basically the um, two x, the third double angle is two cos square x minus one. So use different uh, ways to write on these different formulas, but like, you know, remember that these are in data booklets, so no need to stress too much on mugging up, but just be effective in using it. So if you got sine 4x, 
I'm going to just write down this as this is the angle. It's like double angle. So if you write on single angle for this is 2x, that becomes 2. This 2 doesn't change. It'll be 2 sine 2x times cos 2x. So if I were sine of 8x, I will write down this as 2 sine 4x cos 4x. So any angle that you have seen here, you'll just half the that little angle to get this out here. So um, similarly for cos as well. So if you got uh, let's say cos of 4x, cos of 4x is uh, it is going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared 2x. Okay, so same way if you got cos of cos of 10x, it is 1 minus 2 sine squared 5x or 2 cos squared 5x minus 1. So just be mindful. How do we kind of write and manipulate the double angles? Because a lot of times students, if I give sine 4x, they're like 4 sine x cos x or some other stupid mistake that, that can happen. Okay, so let's just take a sample problem that has been asked. Uh, so there is a question which is sine x is 1 8 and it has been given that x is between 0 to 90. You have to find the value of cos 4x, one of the standard level question, SL level question. So we have to find out the value of cos 4x. Now, why I give those uh, formulas are basically so that you can link up different things. So cos 4x, firstly, I can break this down as 1 minus 2 sine squared, uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared 2x. And further, I can break this down as 1 minus 2 sine 2x the whole square which is 1 minus 2 and sine 2x is nothing but 2 sine x cos x the whole square so we have already got the sine x value which is 1 8 uh, so if sine x is 1 8 if i look at this triangle uh, this is 1 this is 8 uh, hypotenuse is 8 opposite is 1 this is x so this is going to become root of 63 by Pythagoras. So cosine cos of x is actually root of 63 upon 8, which is obviously 3 root 7 upon 8 if you simplify this, this root. So this basically become 1 minus 2 times, uh, which is if you square this, become 1 minus 8 times actually. Sine x is um, 1 8 uh, times cos x is 3 root uh, 7 over 8 the whole square. And the only thing that you have to do after this is to actually simplify. So you have to make sure that your calculations and simplifications are absolutely correct. So what we have got here is uh, to solve the question, which is sine 2x is sine 4x equals to sine 4x. You have to find out all the possible angles that fulfill this particular condition. So now, first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at obviously uh, uh, what you have is let's suppose we got sine 2x. I can break this down uh, right hand side as 2 sine 2x cos 2x. Now, to bring it here, so this sine 2x minus 2 sine 2x cos 2x equals to 0. So, sine 2x, you take it common, is 1 minus 2 cos 2x is 0. You get sine 2x as 0, and you get cos 2x as half. So you got two possible uh, equations now. So in both, both of these will be will solve first for two 360 degree range. So range for 2x is going to be 360. So obviously, we know that sine x is 0 at 0 or 180 or 360. So these are going to be three answers. If you divide each of them by zero, that gives us x as zero, 90, and 180. Similarly, if you got cos 2x is half, is um, basically uh, cos 2x is positive in, in, the, in the quadrants, uh, first and the last, which is 60 degrees here, which is 60 degrees. So 2x is basically 60 degrees, or 2x is either 300. So you get the second two and last two answers are 30 degrees or 150 degrees. So this is the general solution for this particular